Welcome to Euroanesthesia 2023, Europe's premier congress in anesthesiology and intensive care. Anesthesiologists and intensivists from around the globe have convened at Glasgow's Scottish Events Campus Centre to expand their knowledge, explore innovative techniques and learn best practices. This year's programme covers a wide range of topics from general anesthesiology to intensive care, critical emergency and pain medicine and a multifaceted approach to scientific advancements. And you can catch it all here on Euro Anesthesia TV. Welcome to Glasgow. I'm your host, Sam Polly, and over the next few days, Euro Anesthesia TV will be your window into the world of anesthesia and intensive care. We've got an exciting lineup of shows featuring the latest updates, insightful interviews, and cutting edge research. Today, we delve into a topic that aligns perfectly with Glasgow's ethos, sustainability. Join us as we explore the intersection of anaesthesia and environmental responsibility in this remarkable city. On the show today, we check out an exciting new addition to Euro Anesthesia 2023, the Dear Green Place exhibition area. We get insights into well-being in anaesthesia and intensive care, and we stop by the sustainability poster presentations. Remember, you can watch Euro Anaesthesia TV on screens at the Scottish Events Campus Centre, on the Euro Anaesthesia 2023 website, and of course, on our social media. With new content each day of the meeting, make sure to keep watching. First though, to give us an exclusive preview of this year's Euro Anesthesia meeting, I'm joined by Isaac President Professor Eduardo de Robertis and incoming President Professor Wolfgang Burr. Thank you both so much for, for joining us. Um, Eduardo, let me ask you first. It's great to be back at the Euro Anesthesia Annual Meeting. What are you hoping to get out of the meeting this year and what would you encourage delegates to seek out? For me, it's a great pleasure to be here in Glasgow and it's a wonderful city, wonderful environment. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of the scientific program of this Congress this year. All sessions will be um, interesting. I, I would just underline the presentation of our last guidelines on uh, post delirium, on cardiac arrest in operating rooms and on a muscular block that are the new release of the society. And but many, many aspects will be covered, sustainability, um, artificial intelligence, big data use in our profession. So it's really, really interesting. And most of all, we can network again and again and uh, share experiences together. And it's not just science that we're talking no. about this year, Wolfgang, is it? Because there's a lot of focus around sustainability yeah. as well. Why this theme? Why now? Well, I think it's for any one of us, it's obvious that, that we see a dramatic change in climate. And we also have to face the situation that healthcare produces a lot of climate things which needs to be reduced. So I think this year we decided to put this topic quite central because we know that within our community, but also within healthcare in general, a lot of interest is to reduce the climate effects, to work on environmental sustainability. And this also attracts a lot of our members. So we get big responses from our members, from our partners, from industry, but also from healthcare stakeholders in that topic. And we feel there's now something like a time to, to change and we will use this, this momentum. And how can delegates here find out more about that? Well, we created a new area in, in Euroanesthesia, the so-called Dear Green Places, and then every day we have, will give the delegates a chance to discuss topics related to say, sustainability with experts in that field. And, and another new this year, I think, Eduardo, is the launch of the Isaac Expo uh, in the exhibit hall. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's about? It's a place dedicated to discuss and present all uh, Isaac projects. Over the last years, I mean, we, 
that we always have discussed and presented our project, but in different places. So now we have want to concentrate it. And so just to highlight and, and to, to, to welcome all the, the delegates to share ideas and experiences. And let me ask you both now, what do you see the future of uh, anesthesiology in an intensive care? Where do you see that going? Eduardo, I'll start with you. I'm very positive about the future of anesthesiology in intensive care. Uh, I think that the most important aspects for the future is that we have to go green, and we have started, but also to understand better uh, how to uh, use the artificial intelligence and big data in our profession. This uh, will be a very big challenge because the potentiality are huge and we have to drive uh, the, the, the evolution of our profession in, in that sense. Wolfgang, would you add anything to that? Well, I think what we now see is probably the biggest transformation in healthcare within the last 20 years. First of all, as Eduardo pointed out, there's an enormous need of patient care. We have a, an aging population in Europe. There are a lot of challenges to get that done. Second, it also was just mentioned, is the topic of go green, be sustainable. And the third thing we will focus on probably also next year in, in Munich in particular is how can we use data, how can we use monitoring, how can we use information to optimize tailor-made patient care. One of the topics of the upcoming year is to find the optimal solution for every individual patient. And I think anesthesiologists are quite well prepared to do so because this is our daily business. And I think this will be a very strong force forward for our society, but also for us as individuals. Well, thank you both so much for finding time out of your very busy schedules to come and join us. Have a great conference. Thank you conference. to you. Good day. Glasgow, known as the Dear Green Place, is renowned for its green spaces despite its industrial roots. Euro Anesthesia 2023 embraces this spirit by introducing its own Dear Green Place within the exhibition area, highlighting innovative and sustainable solutions. Joining us to discuss this exciting initiative is Dr. Patricio Gonzalez Pizarro, Chair of the Isaac Sustainability Committee. The idea behind the Dear Green Place is uh, to raise awareness among uh, anesthesiologists about the impact in the environment of our practice. We're going to have five islands, uh, five dedicated independent areas that belong to the Dear Green Place. And then we have five different topics represented in, in, in one of the several uh, islands. The first island, it's all about creating a networks and changing practice to raise awareness. The second island is about the environmental impact of our anesthetic drugs, not only inhaled anesthetics, but also propofol and other drugs that we use. The third island is about the energy, energy efficiency, how, how much energy we use and the impact in the environment. The fourth island is about waste management and supply chain, and the five R policies, reuse, recycle, and so on. And the last island is, is beyond anesthesia, because we work together with nurses and surgeons, and we, we need to work together with them as well. So once you get there, the whole idea is, is interaction, building networks, getting to know each other. So speakers are going to be there after the symposium, so you can actually go meet them in private, asking questions privately. Those that you cannot have the, not the opportunity to, to raise a question in the, in, the, in the panel symposium, then you can do it privately. Then we are going to have poster presentations on sustainability, and the industry is going to be able to also to, to present the latest technology that makes our practice more sustainable. First of all, we need training and education, but if we focus on, on systems in the OR, we need proper uh, pumps that allow us to deliver uh, uh, the exact amount of drug. We need to uh, have uh, PG monitors to, in order to tailor the exact amount of drugs that the patient needs. And if we choose inhaled anesthetics, we probably need systems that diminish the amount of inhaled anesthetic that we use. I'm thinking about low flow anesthesia and, uh, and mitigation strategies that absorb the, the uh, inhaled anesthetic and prevents the delivery into the atmosphere. We need to make the best choice for each patient and for our, our environment.
Burnout and depression is becoming a significant problem amongst anesthesiologists. So to talk about some of the challenges that clinicians face throughout their careers and potential solutions, I'm joined by Dr. Matthew Davis, president of the Association of Anesthetists. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. Tell me, um, first of all, you know, what is the problem with depression, mental stress and burnout among anaesthetists and intensivists that we're facing? Uh, good morning, Simon. Thanks very much for the, for the kind invite. I mean, I think, I think it's worthwhile. So medicine is a stressful specialty. Medicine is a very stressful specialty and the workplace that we work, work in is becoming more stressful. And then, of course, in the last three years, we've had the, the huge effect of the COVID pandemic, which has changed many people's lives uh, for the worst. And in fact, we've yet to recover from the workplace uh, stresses that COVID placed on us. What tools are available for practising clinicians to, to improve their well-being being, and increase their resilience? You see, that's an interesting question. I'm going to turn it slightly around on you because, I, you know, a personal thing for me is I don't like the world resilience because that means that people, people, because, you know, medics themselves are very resilient people. They have to be. They've worked in a try. They've been trained to be so. The problem is we have a workplace that sets a period, such a level of stress on people that doesn't matter how much resilience they've got, uh, changing the individual is not the answer. Changing the workplace is the answer. So there are currently lots of toolkits out there, um, certainly on our, our, our organisation and lots of other organisations, both across Europe, have produced toolkits to how we manage, how you can self-manage if you need help immediately or if you want to change your department's the way of managing fatigue and other work like that. But I think the key thing to this is actually looking at the place we work and change the workplace. So how do we do that? Yes. Now, that, and a million dollar question, isn't it, really? So how do we change what essentially is a lot of it is out of our control? So as, as, org as, as membership organisations, as world colleges across Europe, what we have to do is collaborate. We have to come together and we have to advocate for the, for the specialty of anaesthesia, but also joined up with other specialties. And, and talking about the workplace as well, is bullying a problem as well? I mean, you talk about burnout and stress, but is bullying an issue as well? And is that on the rise? Yeah, I mean, very, very topical, really. In the last couple of weeks, there have been some reports that have come out in, in this country and our national media about the level of bullying and harassment of various kinds in the National Health Service. We do have an annual staff survey across the whole of the National Health Service, which, which is, shows the level of bullying. And it is on the rise. Um, the Royal College of Surgeons have done some excellent work on this. They've produced together a lot of toolkits about how you recognise bullying, how you address it in the, in, the, in, the, in the first instance, but how you change the culture around how we treat uh, our, our colleagues, really. And if someone's watching that maybe has seen this happening or is experiencing it themselves, what should they do? So I think there are two people involved. There's the individual who's been bullied. They need to be looked after. Then there's the person who's done the bullying. And I think there is, there's clear guidance that that person, that needs to be highlighted to them. They need to be almost, you could use the word, called out on it. And clinicians obviously face very difficult, stressful situations and catastrophes and critical incidents. How can they manage those best possible in, in their departments? I, I, I think there are... I think one of the key things, and certainly we've got some guidance out from 2015 around this and just publishing it this year, has, uh, around about how you, how you structurally manage a catastrophe. Those involved in the catastrophe probably aren't in the frame of mind to, be in, to, to actually lead the, the, the management of it. So, they, so there should be a clinical leader identified to come in, to look at what's going on, to look after the safety of the patient that's involved, to look after the safety of the staff that are there, step back, decide what happens next and provide support going forward. Just to finish, Matthew, you have a, a session on this um, here at the Congress. What would you really like people to leave your session remembering if there was one thing and kind of what's the, you know, where do we go in the future? I know you spoke about collaboration, but what's the key message? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, the, the, theory, the, the, the point of the session we're going to run really is to sort of share what the journey that we've been through, look at the work the association has done, to try and involve and collaborate both with European organisations and other countries around about how we how we as a, as a specialty, as anaesthesia as a specialty, can look after what is effectively the most precious resource looking after patients and that's the clinicians. Well, it's such an important uh, topic, Matthew. Very best uh, for your session and thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much, Sam. Thank you. Before we wrap up today's episode, let's take a moment to hear from attendees who visited the sustainability poster presentations to gain insight into the importance of sustainability in healthcare.
What I think about a green place is that I'm really happy that this is in the center of the industrial uh, environment or the, 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 the boots because it shows that both from a clinical perspective uh, as a doctor and also the industry that there's a combined interest to do something about the climate change. I have four kids and I want them to grow up in a, in a viable world and I, I think being a bit of a scientist, I, I look at the data and I get very worried. And I think many people still try to ignore the problem or minimize the problem or think that we have a lot of time and I don't think so. I think it's just very inspiring to see that the, um, our, our um, society of anesthesiology and intensive care gives so much space uh, to such an important topic. I think it's very important and it's, uh, it's the right step forward. I think it's really important to um, start the discussion of um, reducing our footprint in the OR. Our footprint is a really large one, so it's really important that we discuss that. And it was really, was really nice to hear the different posters, the different insights, and it, sparked, it also sparked a lot of discussion, like the difficulties that other people had, and it was really interesting to learn from them and how they overcame those um, struggles. I think the poster presentations were uh, so inspiring. It was so great to see how many um, anesthesiologists from different departments and different research teams, uh, what, what projects they were work, working on and from all over Europe, and they were all working towards the same goal, uh, improving sustainability in anesthesiology. And that was very inspiring, and I'm looking forward to bring some of that back home to my own hospital. I think that one of the biggest things that we have to change is the use of uh, anesthetic gas. We should try to reduce the uh, use of um, the gases like nitrous oxide and desflurane. And when we're using um, and try to implement more of total intravenous anesthesia, like the use of propofol as a maintenance hypnotic, um, that should be really the case and can improve uh, our carbon footprint immensely. I think uh, what uh, is most important is that uh, we as anesthesiologists increase awareness of what we are doing in our daily clinical routine. So I think teaching and education and starting already with the young people coming to our department and learning about anesthesiology, I think that's uh, a major cornerstone. There was a lot of interaction between the different presenters of the posters. So that means that, you, and that's that means that there's a lot of exchange of information between centers and I think by cooperation and by uh, delivering the correct information as fast as possible to as many anesthetists as possible, we will start to make the first steps towards a solution. And that brings us to the end of our first show here in Glasgow. But don't worry, we have an exciting lineup for tomorrow's episode. Tune in to hear from this year's esteemed Professor Ibsen lecturer, commemorate the 40th anniversary of the European Journal of Anesthesiology, and remember, you can watch Euro Anesthesia TV on screens at the Scottish Events Campus Centre. On the Euro Anesthesia 2023 website, and of course, on our social media. Join us tomorrow for another captivating episode filled with enlightening discussions. We'll see you then. <laughs>